All right, let's jump in. So uh, the Biden administration yesterday, uh, not yesterday, a, a couple of days ago, announced that they are going to basically, they're not going to mandate that you buy an EV car, but they're going to mandate that uh, gasoline cars have such high uh, emission standards that basically they'll they'll go out of existence. And, and with the goal, the goal is going to be to get uh, to 67% of EVs in I think 2032 or something like that. So so really, within 10 years, nine years, uh, we get to two thirds of all automobiles in the country uh, being uh, EV. Uh, I can't remember what the number is right now, but I think it's under 10%. As six percent, only six percent today, are buying electric vehicles. So, uh, I mean, I mean, this is just, you know, continued manipulation of us as consumers uh, by uh, the Biden administration, by our government. It is a massive violation of our rights. It is an attempt to force Americans to buy an inferior car, and we'll talk about why it's an attempt to uh, an inferior car, why EVs are inferior, by what standard are they inferior. And, of course, the second issue is that it's going to dramatically increase the demand for, for electricity. Um, when we have a grid and an energy supply that it clearly is in trouble and in decline. Now, of course, the best commentator on this issue is Alex Epstein, so I encourage you to check his uh, uh, Twitter feed out and is, of course, uh, uh, subscribe star, subscribe star, what am I talking about? Um, his um, substack, I knew it started with an S. His substack where he talks about this and he, and he has some great commentary in this and I'm basically taking Alex's talking points, but that's why he puts them out there. He puts them out there so people use them. So I am using Alex Epstein's talking points. Now, how do we know that uh, EVs are inferior? Well, we know they're inferior because only 6% of you buy electric vehicles. The standard of quality uh, for price is determined by you, by your values, by your preferences for automobiles, by what you want and what you don't want in an automobile. And in your actions, we American people as consumers are clearly uh, indicating our lack of interest and desire to buy electric vehicles. Uh, you know, a big part of that is they're expensive. Uh, they might not ride quite as well. Um, they have short range. We, we, we want to be able to, Americans like to drive and they like to drive distances. And if you live in LA and you live in Orange County, you live in California, you drive a lot. If you live in Texas, you drive a lot. You don't want to have to be constrained by where the charging stations and all of that. Um, so uh, clearly this is going to deny the American people the ability to buy what they want and uh, force them into buying what the government decides is good for them, what the government decides they must buy, what the government decides they must consume. So uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, th this is coercion at its worst. This is uh, the implementation of coercion um, in, um, as applied to our purchases. What is going on? Is the video frozen? The video's not frozen, right? The video's fine, right? All right. Um, so, you know, government is there to protect our rights, not to violate our rights. Government is there to protect our ability to choose from what the market makes available. The fact that, the, that today, with all the subsidies, with the tax credits, with the advantages, with the... The whole infrastructure that is now being created by the government and subsidized by the government and provided by the government, in spite of all that, EVs are still expensive and only 6% of us buy. So this is not a product that is yet ready for mass consumption. This is not a product that is yet ready for uh, all of us to, 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 to purchase. If it was, then the market would take care of it. Right? Uh, I, I have nothing against getting to 67%, except for point two, which we'll get to. I have nothing against people driving electric cars. If that is the choice they make, and in a market where 
the choices that are being made are not being subsidized by people who haven't made that choice. So, you know, uh, uh, it is, um, you know, the, 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 again, the, the, the range issue and the cost issue are probably the two, uh, the two dominant ones. And then, of course, what happens when the electricity goes out? Uh, if you look at uh, if you look at uh, California, uh, I don't know if this summer, but it was it last summer when they had the fires? Last summer, uh, it, 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 last summer or two summers ago when they had the fires, and they had to do rolling blackouts. When they do the rolling blackouts, that means you can't charge your car during that period. Um, how do you get to work the next day? How do you use the car the next day if you can't charge it overnight? When they happen to have a blackout, what happens when electricity goes out because of other causes? Here in Puerto Rico, electricity is, is incredibly unreliable. Texas, we had the ice storm where, where electricity is out in vast parts of it. So uh, there are a lot of issues and a lot of reasons why people don't want to buy electric vehicles. And forcing them to buy electric vehicles is basically forcing them to accept a low standard of living and a low quality of life, an inferior product. Now, the second issue, of course, is that we are struggling with a grid, with an electric grid that is in decline, an electric grid that can barely carry the load that is required today, an electric grid that is going to be um, provided for by more and more and more windmills and, um, and, uh, and, and solar panels, that are unreliable, an electric infrastructure, if you will, that is increasingly unreliable, both because the grid itself is old and, 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 and unsophisticated and not modernized and unreliable. But we now have more and more electricity provided to the grid by unreliable sources like windmills and solar panels. And now you want to load up automobiles on top of that you got to be nuts imagine if during the texas ice storm or during you remember was it two or three years ago when uh the grid collapsed in texas uh, and that was without electric cars imagine what would happen in california which is short on electricity anyway they have a hard time providing everybody with electricity imagine what would happen in this case if, um, if now you add on to the grid the millions and millions and millions of automobiles we have in the country, it's just, it's just nuts. It is insane. It is undoable. It is a, a dramatic attempt to reduce our quality and standard of living, and, and we, should, we should fight against it with everything that we have. This is uh, pathetic. Now, California already has a mandate that by 2035... Um, are they going to outlaw all oil-fueled vehicles? Do they have a program by 2035 to bolster the grid, to provide more reliable energy sources, more, reliably, more reliable electricity? I, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. You know, here's a state with no electricity demanding that we increase our demand for electricity. Uh, insanity and an important story to watch and see how this develops um, and, uh, and what happens. What is interesting is that in, um, in China, uh, where they are producing very cheap electric vehicles, they are seeing a dramatic increase in uh, electric vehicle use. Uh, China also has a far better uh, electric grid infrastructure. China also has uh, much more reliable energy sources. They're less obsessed with alternative energy. They're less obsessed with solar and wind, although they are investing in it. They're less obsessed with it. They're investing in so in uh, sorry in nuclear. They're investing in in uh, gas powered uh, electricity. Uh, the Chinese can probably afford to have their automobile industry go electric. They're even building new coal power plants. The United States cannot afford it. Uh, China is actually going to see a reduction in demand for gasoline uh, 
uh, over the next few years because of dramatic increase in, in electric vehicles. Those cheap electric vehicles are not in the United States. They don't sell in the United States. The, these are the real competitors to Tesla, Chinese made. Uh, and of course, they, uh, th we don't have the kind of electric grid that China has, which at least in its major hubs is far superior to that of the United States. Sad testament, just that is sad. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.